Snow Tracks is sponsored by Skidoo Snowmobiles. Experience that Skidoo feeling. Yamaha revs your heart. And by FXR Racing. Maximum versatility for all conditions. a big year for Articat. Well, actually, it's kind of a small year in sled options, but a big year in changes to the lineup. I guess, really, it's not totally the lineup, but it's the way that they sell sleds. Yeah, this is a pretty big departure from the norm. And for those who've been hiding in a cave since the public release on February 22nd of 2019, I'm going to fill you in. If you didn't spring order your 2020 cat, you didn't get one. And for 2020, the big news is the Riot. It's a 146 inch 50 50 crossover sled that's playing into a very busy category this season. Yes, it's available as a big old two inch Riot X with mountain spindles and high risers, but we're focused on the category that seems to literally be on fire this year. The 146 inch long rail with a 1.6 inch lug Cobra track. And for 2020, there's three players in this category. So what's the big differentiating factors for the Riot? Well, for one thing, it's Arctic Cat's first laser attempted focus at making a true 50-50 on-off trail sled that didn't just pull some length from a mountain skid frame. The 146 inch rear suspension on the Riot is a slide action, and that means that we get the uncoupled rear arm characteristics with the slide action's one inch free play on the front upper mount. We like this skid in all its other lengths, and the one thing that we like most is it's a 50-50 crossover that they pulled the tech from a trail side of things, not the mountains, and that's why we feel it's a winner. Sure, the 146 inch rail is long, and yes, you are gonna notice more of it when you go to shred a corner on the trails, but one of the things that we like is that this rear skid rides like a trail sled. By this, I mean the conventional torsion rear springs instead of a coil over rear shock, and it works like a trail skid. It floats through good sized moguls, deals with small chatter exceptionally well, bridges bumps like a 137 couldn't dream of, and while you will get a little rear end flap when you get on the haze brake coming into a rough corner, the buttery smoothness when you stab the throttle exiting and the feel that that 146 inch slide action gives you soaks up the acceleration chatter well thanks to the hallmarks of a well thought out 146 inch crossover rail. Damping on all but the front arm shock comes by way of Fox QS3 shocks and they do a great job of letting us go from on trail flat top smooth groom to off trail fun with nothing more than just a click. Cranking all of the QS3s up to firm allows me to jump, carve and rip up any powder I find with exceptional ease. The 146 inch rail is perfect for floating through just about anything the 1.6 inch cup lug Cobra will pull me through. While this is a track lug that's on the shorter side for deep powder play, the great part of the ride is that the harmony of flotation of the 146 inch length and it allows us to get away with a very trailable lug and yet still get where we want off trail. Under the hood is the updated SeaTech 2 SDI 8000. No more slot skirt for this riot. Squeezing the throttle lifts the forged aluminum spindles in the ARS2 race-derived front suspension and lets us both carve the trail in the fresh powder or rip off a wind lip and throttle through a rear idler wheelie at wide open throttle. The 8000 is playful, snappy, and spools up quick to get you the momentum you need when you expect it. 
Both on and off trail, the SeaTech is a solid contender in the big board category and still makes us smile under our helmets. Sure, it's a little bit dirty, but yeah, it does work great. To optimize the sit or stand positioning, Arctic Cat opted for the lay down steering post and a reasonable height rider, and it allows us to do both of those pretty easily. And that can be the make it or break it of a crossover sled. While some feel great on trail, it may be too hunched over off trail and vice versa. But the Riots found the right harmony between the two. Getting aggressive on the trail and hanging off the inside of the sled to corner hard, the bars are still fully functional without feeling awkwardly tall. But when you pull into the POW and want to stand up, they're right where you need them. Coloration this year is a departure from last year's muted purples, but it's fresh, it's fun, and it suits this style of rider. So with a lot of overall praise, is there anything the Riot isn't? Well, there's the lingering elephant in the room that wonders when Arctic is going to bring a new chassis to the market, or really show the powerhouse capabilities of Textron who backs them. 2020 is no doubt a strange year in buyers' minds with a lack of in-season 2020s available, but maybe this is a strategy that segues Arctic Cat to clearing house, tightening up the ship, and getting ready to pounce on the snowmobile market as hard as the Riot likes to pounce on the fresh powder. Time will tell, but until then, we've got the 2020 Riot, and I've got to say, this is a very formidable sled. Not just off-trail, but handling very respectably on-trail as well. In the early days of snowmobiling, the science behind the products was fairly limited, focusing mostly on the dynamics of how the sled traversed over the snow. That was pretty much it, but as time went on and more specialized sleds were developed for specific purposes, the science of snowmobiling began focusing on not just how the sled went over the snow, but how the sled interacts with the snow on countless levels. In 2020, we see examples of this all over the place. Sleds designed to interact with the snow in very specific ways. The best example of this is Polaris's Pro RMK. It is arguably the most precise sled in the industry for technical riding on the steepest slopes or tightest trees. Every aspect of that sled has been optimized for this purpose. The only downside is that because the Pro RMK is so single-minded, it's not really as easy to ride or as much fun to ride as some other sleds when it's out of its element. Enter Polaris's new RMK Chaos, a sled designed to interact with the snow in a completely different way than the Pro RMK, with a focus on fun rather than ultimate precision. Now, I didn't use the term all new for the Chaos for a very important reason. This sled is definitely not all new. In fact, the majority of the sled is identical to the Pro RMK, and I already know what you're thinking. How different can it possibly be? I approached the Chaos with the very same skepticism. I mean, a Pro RMK with updated suspension geometry and crazy graphics is still just a Pro RMK, but I couldn't have been more wrong. As I said, the heart of the Chaos is the Pro RMK chassis and of course, Polaris's incredible Patriot 850 power plant. In terms of front end geometry, body work, and pretty much everything else bolted to the sled, it's the same. The differences become apparent when you start looking at the suspension. The first thing you're gonna notice is a full set of Walker Evans position sensitive velocity needle shocks. Now why is this important? Well, Walker Evans velocity shocks are the absolute pinnacle of current shock technology. Visually, you can tell a velocity shock apart from any other walker piggyback because the reservoir is mounted partway down the shock body. They are tuned specifically to work with the new Chaos-specific skid frame geometry that includes a longer front arm shock, extended limiter straps, rails with different mounting locations for the suspension arms, and a completely revised front arm design. These changes are all intended to lift some weight off the front of the sled and reposition it onto the rear of the sled. But what's the end goal here? Well, in a nutshell, the goal was to build a more playful RMK that initiates side hills and carves easier and with less effort, while at the same time having a lighter front end feel that's more poppy and fun in the flatter meadows and pillow fields. Polaris calls it an all mountain sled. I call it a success. I've spent considerable time on the chaos this season, and while skeptical at first, it didn't take me more than 10 minutes to be completely convinced that this sled is everything Polaris promised it would be front end is light and the sled wants to wheelie pretty much everywhere. Initiating and holding a carve on flatter ground or rolling hills is, and I know this word is overused, but it fits perfectly here, effortless. Where a Pro RMK wants to keep the skis on the ground, an excellent trade on the tightest, gnarliest lines, the Chaos wants to lift its skis off the ground and ride around more on the track. 
In deep snow, this sled feels almost like a jet ski and how you can simply lean from side to side to carve back and forth. The 850 has absolutely no trouble spinning either the 155 by 2.6 or 155 by 3 inch lug track options. And when things start to get really deep or steep, you always know you've got more than enough power on tap to get you through, up, or over anything. On top of its fun and playful feel in the meadows, the Chaos loves to get some atmosphere under its track whenever the opportunity arises. It's not at all upset by sketchy, crooked, rutted out takeoffs. It's easy to control in the air and those walker velocity shocks do a great job soaking up even the hardest landings. The only real fault I can find with the Chaos is that I'm constantly running out of gas before all the fun has been had. Not that it doesn't hold enough, it's just so much fun I never want to stop riding. Back to the original question, how much different can the Chaos really be than a Pro RMK? The answer, it couldn't be any more different. This is not to say the Chaos isn't capable in the trees or where it's ultra steep. It's simply not as capable as a pro because it's not supposed to be. If you ride the steepest, deepest terrain or the tightest tree lines, the truth is the Pro RMK is still gonna be the best choice for you. But for the rest of us who love to spend endless hours in the meadows and open bowls, popping off pillows, wheeling across creeks, sending it off anything that even hints at decent airtime and carving up every last inch of deep pow, you're not gonna find a better sled for the job than Polaris's 2020 RMK Chaos. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. Snowmobiling is an amazing pastime and sport, and motor technology advancements in the last decade alone have been nothing short of incredible, with manufacturers pushing the limits of power and economy past anywhere we thought possible. But when you boil all of that amazing engine tech down, there's one link between your engine and getting all that great horsepower to the snow. And that link is your drive belt. And while it may be the last thing that's on your mind when you pick up your new sled from the dealership or you roll the old iron out of the storage, it should in reality be the first thing on your mind. Now I'm not saying you need to bandolier up your sled with a half dozen drive belts, nor am I saying that your stock belt isn't any good. But remember, having a high quality, purpose-built belt provides dependability, performance, and value. And the belts that I'm referring to are the Ultimax line of performance drive belts. There's three different lines within their brand, the Pro, the Max, as well as the XS. And they cover everything from vintage sleds all the way up to your brand new 2020 170 plus horsepower sleds. What I have here to install today is the Ultimax XS drive belt. The XS is the top of the line belt from Ultimax and is specifically designed with the highest horsepower sleds in mind. Ultimax specifically formulates rubber compounds that are found in no other belts on the market, which allow them to offer incredible efficiency and peak power delivery. And remember, on a CVT snowmobile, a small increase in driveline efficiency can mean significantly better performance that you're gonna feel from the first throttle blip to wide open pulls down the lake. Ultimax is not a company that makes a wide range of products for a wide range of consumers. Nope, they are a company who builds drive belts and that is all that they do. With over 30 years of experience in the power sports belt category, they know their stuff and are the only aftermarket belt brand to supply belts to the manufacturers. They're trusted by the OEMs to deliver a quality product and have incredible reputation for first-class customer service, which from our experience, you're not gonna be needing much of. And what do I mean by that? Well, from our experience using Ultimax belts all last season, as well as all throughout the summer on everything from sleds to ATVs and side-by-sides, we have had zero problems. I'm talking no complaints. Maybe it's the fact that Ultimax stands behind their snowmobile drive belts with a hassle-free one-year replacement warranty on all three belt lines, the Ultimax XS high horsepower, Ultimax Pro mid horsepower, and Ultimax Max lower horsepower lines. Or it could be that they don't just mass produce belts without putting them through rigorous testing that adds up to over 1 million miles in the field each season. Yeah, these folks mean business and their products are built with enthusiasts in mind. 
So here's my suggestion to you. Whether you just bought a brand new sled and are picking it up from the dealership, or you're pulling your old sled out of storage, give Ultimax a try and follow these simple steps. Take your stock belt off your sled and replace it with an Ultimax XS, Pro, or Max, depending on your sled's performance level. Don't toss your old belt out unless it shows signs it's toast, but keep it as your backup on your sled. Ensure you put the new Ultimax belt through the break-in process of half throttle or less for the first 20 miles. I know it's hard to do, but trust me, this is key to ensuring that you get the most performance in life out of your drive belt. And that's that. If you follow these simple steps, you're gonna be set up for miles of worry-free service this season and beyond. Because in reality, who's got time for changing belts trail side? Winter's only so long, spend it riding. For 2020, the Viper comes back to the stable. This time it's reimagined, redesigned, and tweaked to give you more than it ever has before. More power, more cooling, more reliability. And when you link it to the all new GT package, it gives you way more features. Right up front, let's address the GT package. It can be found on many 2020 Yamaha models, but on this very bright, very shiny, very red LTX, it represents a whole lot of options that we really like. GT means Fox QS3 suspension on the front ski shocks and the rear arm shock. It means Ripsaw 2 1.25 inch tracks. It represents a taller DX windshield to keep you warmer on those bitter cold days when you need to log miles. And it also represents amenities like a heated seat, RCA heated shield outlet, and the large 20 inch tunnel bag for storing all the things that you might need along your way, as well as a goggle bag up on the dash to store, well, your goggles, of course. But we won't tell if you put other stuff in there too. So there is much to the all new GT package, but is it something that you're asking for? And in the LTX, is it something that we would want? Well, there's always comparison drawn between the performance of the big turbo to anything else Yamaha makes. Let's cast that aside because no, this is not a turbo and no, I don't want it to be. The 1049cc Genesis provides exceptional power from roll on to trail cruising to, hey, look what I can do. Power is respectable and it sits somewhere in the 600cc two stroke class range. But more importantly than all of that is the refinement of this motor. Yeah, it's been around for, well, a while. And that's because this is by far away the smoothest, most usable, most pleasurable, naturally aspirated four-stroke snowmobile motor ever made. Ruffling some feathers, am I? Well, if you don't agree with us, you're what we like to call wrong. And if you don't agree with me, spend some time with the 1049cc Genesis, and you'll probably want to take it home to meet mom. Yes, this season there's a new ECU programming, a refined cooling system, the use of new stealth switch gear and the beautiful new plastics and an LED signature headlight that make it truly stand out. But what makes it truly stand out is all that goodness of the LTX is still in there. It's just got, well, gooder. Gone are the HPG shocks, as is the SRV front suspension, spindles and geometry. And we wish gone was the tuner three skis, but you don't always get what you want. We'll get over it. In place of the basic shocks and older design suspension components is the ARCS front suspension and geometry, as well as the full kit of Fox QS3 dampers everywhere that you look except for the front arm shock in the rear. While the base model LTX last season rode good, these shocks make it ride better. But then again, with the new geometry and spindle, we're not sure which is making it better. But when the trails get rough and the days get long, the QS3s are a welcome sight no matter how you shake this one out. In terms of the rear suspension, you'll only be getting an upgrade to the rear arm shock that's now a QS3. Other updates or upgrades? There are none. Nothing more, nothing less. And truly nothing more is needed. The DualShock SR137 sliding front arm mount skid frame is not just good, it's really solid. Is it arm motion good or NDXC good? Well, it's pretty close, but not quite. The addition of the QS3s really does allow you to tune the coupled skid and to get the most out of it with relative ease, and your gloves still on. Are three clicks enough to match the competition that can tunnel adjust and clickers? I think so. While there are easier systems for change, there's harder ones too, and this fits right nicely in the middle. And while we're talking about change, what do all the amenities on the LTX GT do to make my day out on the trail even better? And are they able to do that at all? You bet your sweet heated seat they do. If you're gonna rack up considerable miles or just wanna put on your miles in comfort, the GT package is good to go. And it's not just really good, it's like industry leading good. Big windshield, the heated seat, the multiple storage areas that you don't have to spend an extra couple hundred bucks on after you just dropped a whole lot on this brand new sled. 
and these are things that you really do use and really do need to make your trip better. Refinement is the name of the game for the 2020 season, and Yamaha has not disappointed with the LTX GT Viper package. Corner to corner, there's just something right about the 1049 Genesis in this chassis. It comes on easy, but has no problem going a few rounds in the ring when you want to. The upgraded QS3 shocks are everything you could ask for with nothing left to chance and allow you to stay happy and riding hard from smooth groomed morning to whooped out Sunday afternoon. Am I left feeling I need something more? Up till now, one of my biggest gripes was the switch gear, but with all that updated and working proper, I truly don't know what more I could ask of Yamaha out of this 137 600 class sled. And it's because of this that I'm at a little bit of a loss for words. I feel that in 2020, Yamaha has listened to both buyers as well as the competition and responded with what I think is a real winner. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Snowmobiles. MBRP Performance Exhaust, Race Inspired, Trail Proven, and by Hercules Tire, Ride on Our Strength. If you like what you've just seen, click the subscribe button and comment below. And make sure you check out all of our great videos on Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel.